Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Mike Elko, this Texas A&M program, continue to do really good work in the transfer portal, bringing in former UCF defensive lineman Josh Salisgar. And where you want to start with a guy like Josh Salisgar, I've watched enough UCF broadcasts to know that he was one of the leaders of that UCF team the last couple of years. When you watch the UCF games, that's all they really talk about, about Josh Salisgar being that leader of that UCF defense, a two-time team captain that brings a ton of experience to this Texas A&M defense, a guy that's played over 2,200 snaps during his career at UCF and has been really productive, over 24 tackles for a loss, eight sacks. This is a guy that comes into Texas A&M Probably not going to be a starter for Texas A&M, but you talk about depth on that defensive line, something extremely important to go into SEC play with. Josh Salisgar certainly going to add to that kind of depth. And and we've seen Mike Elko play absolutely no games with establishing the line of scrimmage. If you asked me, where's Texas A&M strongest heading into 2024? I'd probably say that defensive line, but for Mike Elko, it's never enough. He wants more talent. He wants more depth. And I think that's exactly what Josh Salisgar brings to this Texas A&M team. Really excited to get into his game. Talk a little bit about how this Texas A&M defensive line is going to shake out. Before we do, and as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. A massive shout out to the Texas A&M fans. I mean, over the last couple of months, this program in the transfer portal has been a blast to talk about. And the amount of support you guys continue to show to the fellas truly does mean a lot. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into Josh Salisgar. And I, this is a guy that, one, the versatility is very intriguing for me. Seven, six, four, 265 pounds. You take a look at the snap count really plays all over that defensive line for UCF the last couple of years. But I think where the most production you're going to see from a guy in Josh Salisgar is what he does against the run, right? It's always fun to get the flashy edge rushers that put up 10 to 15 sacks a game. Josh Salisgar is not going to be one of those guys, but you talk about setting up those kind of guys, the Nick Skirtons, the Shamar Turners, Josh Salisgar is going to be one of those guys. He's phenomenal against the run. Going back to 2022, which is probably his best film, had over 30 run stops for UCF in 2023, had 19 run stops. He's a heavy-handed defensive lineman that you can move all along that defensive line, but wins at the point of attack. He gets off blocks, is a very, very good run defender. And again, It's not always the flashy headline. That's not what Mike Elko is about. We've talked about this a lot. Mike Elko is not going to be a guy like Jimbo Fisher that tries to make the flashy, flashy moves in the transfer portal. Mike Elko wants to get good football players, and it's not always the flash. And Josh Salisgar, I think, represents kind of that lack of flash. And again, a guy that you kind of want in your locker room, right? We talk about Jimbo Fisher and some of the struggles that you saw for Texas A&M. I think a lot of it had to do with just poor locker room management. This was an undisciplined football team that really didn't have many leaders. Josh Salisgar was a two-time team captain for UCF. He comes over to Texas A&M, bringing that veteran guy into that defensive line. You talk about building your locker room culture. I think Josh Salisgar is certainly going to play a role in that. And you take a look at what Texas A&M is going to have on the defensive line. And I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about our top five defenses in college football. And I threw Texas A&M at number five and I got a lot of heat for it. And yeah, is it a little bit of a projection? Am I projecting Mike Elko to really get this unit right heading into 2024? Absolutely am. But you start looking at some important aspects of a defense heading into 2024, especially in the SEC, you want to see elite line of scrimmage play in Texas A&M, not only elite line of scrimmage play with some star talent, guys like Shamar Turner, Shamar Stewart, Nick Skirt, and guys that really could be playing in the NFL if they wanted to, but you also have a ton of depth. You're talking about guys like DJ Hicks, Gabriel Brown, Laudin, you bring in a guy in Cassius Howell coming from Bowling Green who has a ton of juice coming off the edge, and now you add Josh Salisgar. You look at some of the top defenses that we've seen in college football over the last couple of years, you think back to some of those Georgia teams. Yes, they had the star talent talent that Texas A&M has, the Jordan Davises, the Devontae Wyatts, the Nolan Smiths, the Jalen Carters, 
Georgia also was extremely deep on that defensive line, right? When Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis needed to trot off the field to get a little bit of a blow, they had guys coming in that were NFL caliber guys that were starting caliber guys on a lot of other programs. You see a lot of college teams across the country have some star talent, but they don't have the depth. And you talk about winning games in November and in December, you got to have that depth. And I think Michigan last year in 2023 was also a really good example of that. Yes, you had the star talent like Mason Grant and Kenneth Grant, but you also had guys behind them that would start on a lot of power five teams. This was a guy in UCF and Josh Salisker who started for the last two years at UCF. He's coming over to Texas A&M. He's not going to be a starter for Texas A&M. I don't even know if he'll be in the 2D, but he's going to play a lot of football for Texas A&M. And when guys like Shamar Stewart, Shamar Turner, Nick Skirton, you got to keep him fresh and keep getting him off the field. You have a guy in Josh Salisker who's coming in who the drop-off of play, it's not going to be that significant. That's probably my favorite idea of this pickup for Texas A&M. And another thing to quickly note is, and Josh Salisgar has a free year of eligibility because of COVID in 2022. He is 2020. He's played every single year since he's been at UCF. My biggest takeaway here is that he's coming to Texas A&M, probably knowing that he's not going to be a starter for this Texas A&M program in his last year of eligibility. But what did Mike Elko sell him? Is that, hey, we have an elite defensive line. You can come in and be a part of that. And whether you're playing 800 snaps or only 250 snaps, those 250 snaps for a guy like Josh Salisgar are going to be damn good snaps for this Texas A&M program. The star talent's there on the defensive line. I think the depth is there on the defensive line. I think this is a really sneaky addition. Again, maybe not going to garner a ton of news on Twitter and on the message boards, but you ask me about this pickup, I really like it. And it continues to kind of make me a little bit more confident in my Texas A&M top five defense projection because line of scrimmage play is how you have elite defenses. And Texas A&M looks to be elite on that defensive line heading into 2024 star power. You combine that with depth. That's a good recipe for Mike Elko heading into 2024. Excited for the next couple of weeks. As you know, Mike Elko is going to continue to try to get this roster in the right spot heading into 2024. We'll keep you guys as updated as possible, as usual. Can't thank you guys enough for all the support. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.